Hey guys, what's going on, Kyle Car guys? I'm here with me, Patrick Robin. How's it going? If you guys want to, link will be down in the description to buy his book. Nice. I'm currently on chapter four. Nice. I believe I'm getting I'm getting through it. Pat. Progress. It's, progress is, is at the best there. So, um, if if I had a dollar for every time somebody asked me in the past three or four days what your list is for this. Uh, particular monarch deck we both would be really rich <laughs> so I mean I'm glad you came on the channel here to kind of go over you know the new format version of your monarch deck now why uh, you know ex extra deck monarchs what would kind of spark the idea um, I realized this crazy combo that you could do with overdrive teleporter and then that's what sparked it all yeah awesome well sure. let's go here and uh, let's see what your ratios are with we'll ask questions on going all right so i played two overdrive teleporter um it's kind of the point of the decks what it does you pay 2000 you special two level three psychics from your deck um so i played these are the only two um level three psychics i played just blue layer and ghost ogre mm -hmm. um but like if you draw this together then sure it's dead but if you draw this like you can still return it so it's not dead okay um but what you can do with this is uh you tribute um pay 2000 search or special these out and then grab a red layer um and then you synchro for stardust charge and then when you do that you draw a card and then you overlay for Beatrice, and then Beatrice sends Pantheism to the grave. Um, so then you get a uh, search off Pantheism, and then on your opponent's turn too, you can send Edia um, from detaching the other material, and then add the Pantheism back. So like one tribute summon gives you four cards and a floater. Um, yeah, it's a lot of cards that, for, one, for one card. <laughs> that's like really broken. That's awesome. Yep. So like. Had, <laughs> Overdrive teleport, like you just come across that card and just think like. Oh yeah, it's on my it's on my list of cards. I have like a a whole list of cards that will be good eventually, and and that was one of the ones that yep. was on the list for sure. That's hilarious. Okay, so um, so that's the the ratios you play of the right the sidekicks. Okay. Um, I would play three teleporter, but I didn't really want to draw Ghost Ogre as much. Like Ghost Ogre is not very good um, to draw. And I couldn't go like three with only two targets. Okay. And I felt like that would be kind of dead too kinda much. But that's the only reason I didn't play three teleporter. Um, I played double red layer. Okay. Um, red layer is really good with this deck just because you can just summon it uh, and then get back prime and you start with a rank five every turn. And then it's really easy to get the second one through like teleports and stuff. So like once one dies, you summon it, add it back to your hand, and then you have like a, a loop where it's a rank five every single turn. Have you um, ever missed the third? I know when you were originally playing this a couple weeks ago, when we were play testing with it, um, you said you might add a third one in. Has the third one ever come up for you where you needed it? Um, it's not. It's pretty rare, I think. Um, I don't know. I haven't really missed it. Plus, you don't really want to draw two of them together. Okay. That's the biggest reason for playing two. Um, and then I played two Edia and one Eidos and one Mithra. Well, why this particular uh, ratio of these um, particular monsters? So I played Brilliant Fusion of and. Brilliant Fusion is really good with uh, the Edias. Mm -hmm. You just banish Pantheism, um, add, add like a Prime or whatever, and then play Brilliant Fusion to add the Pantheism back to your hand. Okay. Um, by sending the Edia to the grave. And then um, you. This one's the best to draw mm -hmm. in the opening hand just because you can. It counts as two tributes. Yeah. Um, and because you play two of it, you have to play at least one of these, but you don't really want to draw this one very much. Okay. Um, it's not terrible to draw. Is just um, if you draw it, then like these are dead, and if you draw it, it's only a one tribute monster, so you need either like domain or prime to be able to summon like Erebus or Ether back. Okay. Um, and the Mithra is insane because like um, it, I think it's better than the second one because once you use this effect to put this in grave, you can banish to summon this back, and then you go get Mithra here. Um, but this is uh, so it's very similar mm -hmm. to just summoning another uh, thing right here because okay. you would get the extra summon either way. But uh, if you draw this one, it's better to draw than this um, because if they strike this effect, then it ends your turn. But if they strike this effect, then you haven't normal summoned yet. Okay. All right. Um, and then I just played one Garnet, uh, Majesties. Uh, 
I didn't play this with the YCS, but I had to take out the upstarts or something. And like, Majesty is really good against the BA deck. Of course. Yeah, you can yeah, just yeah. Uh, storm forth their Beatrice and summon this and put you really far ahead. Yeah, very, very far ahead. I saw that a couple times today, yeah, actually. I just played one Karaz. Um, this card sucks. I only play it to turn off for turn. Um, if you ever have to do it on your opponent's cards, like, you're probably losing. Then three um, of those and three of this. I don't play two of those, so the YCS too. But um, it's not bad. You just don't want multiples often. Yeah. Uh, one up start. Why watch? <laughs> <laughs> Three pantheism. Um, one domain. Um, What's it's, the reasoning with your one domain? It's still relevant to be able to search it to just reduce Erebus or Ether to make it a one tribute monster mm -hmm. so you can like banish Panthe or banish the um, for Prime and then be able to summon it off of just that okay. without having to have anything else there. Um, so like adding one to the deck even though you're not like getting the floodgate part of the effect um, mm -hmm. it still has a lot of use. With this particular deck can you, can you still get the floodgate effect off with it? No. I, I did play a version of this where I played uh, eight cards in my extra deck and I played Mega Zaborg so I attributed and killed Mega Zaborg work and it sent all eight and then I played this um, and then I zero my extra deck after that but at this point no. <laughs> no okay. I just wanted to make sure. Um, three Stormforth. Uh, three Brilliant Fusion. Three Return. Mm -hmm. um, Oh, something else you can do with uh, Teleporter is, I think this was better when we played double Ghost Ogre and triple Overdrive, but you could go get this, and then you could summon double Ghost Ogre. Like, you can still do it here um, with this, but it's just not as good as Ghost Ogre would be here. Um, and then you can go get Ether, and then if this were a Ghost Ogre, then you have like double defensive card, a third defensive card, and then a follow up on your opponent's turn. Because like you could tribute this to summon this, give yourself an Erebus there, and then Pantheism Prime. Um, and it puts you really far ahead. Okay. Now, did uh, re three returns ever clog for you? Um, I mean, they all clock sometimes, but like just with pantheisms and specifically Erebus's effect too, because mm -hmm. you can pitch extra ones to some, to add back from grief. Okay. Yeah. Um, I play triple tenacity and double teleport. We actually only even played two with the YCS. You only played two with the YCS. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I didn't want the third. And then uh, double prime. I thought I'd miss the third prime, but. I haven't really so far. I haven't really? Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it's not the best draw when uh, you don't have pantheism. Well, since you're playing an extra deck, let's see this uh, this extra deck. <laughs> I know right. a lot of people want to see like the different cards you're playing. I played Scarlight. Um, you made that on the dual video. Right? Yeah, I did. Uh, this is one of the first times I made it. You don't, you don't use him or Omega very much. Um, but I played Omega, then Stardust Charge. Uh, these are all the synchros I played. Mm -hmm. And for Rank 8, played um, Hope Harbringer. Card's broken. Yep, card's definitely broken. And Gimmick Puppet. You just kill your opponent a lot of the time. This um, has got to be one of your favorite XC. I, I, I like this card a lot. Like, like with you Sylvans, can just randomly with kill them. And now just this um, too. You can. There was like one game I was playing where I went like overlay for Volcasaurus, pop his guy, pop his like um, Ignister or something, mm -hmm. and then I made Gaia on top of it, and he had the Master in defense still. And then I made this, and then like pop Magister and uh, <laughs> something else, and it just like killed him through his giant field. That's broken. hilarious. Um, then just one Beatrice. Mm -hmm. um, we actually just didn't play any targets for it. Um, we were originally, but it doesn't come up very much because they assume you're playing targets, so then they like try and get it off the field other ways. Yeah. And I'm not saying it never comes up, I'm just saying that like it was, I thought the other cards were more relevant. I might play it going forward, um, but I don't think I ever missed it. And, okay. Um, Gaia. Uh, ladies, because you make it with the double prime. Yeah. Uh, the quantum thing, this card's broken. Uh, just pop a monster in your turn, in your opponent's turn. And Durendal. How good is this card? Uh, Durendal is amazing against Cosmo specifically, because uh, you just overlay into this, and then if they have a pilot on the field and they banish you, you just negate. And you just win after that yep. one, pretty much. Yeah, um, okay. Oh, th there's something else cool that you can do with this. If you have. Um, these two in hand, you could make Durendal 
like doing this or whatever, and then you can just set this and then detach and then shuffle your hand back. So you shuffle the garnet back and then it makes your brilliant fusion live. <laughs> that's actually clever. Okay, that's awesome. Um, you know, oh, we're actually thinking about playing. Uh, I, I only played one Seraf Knight, but we we're actually thinking about playing a second one for some uh -huh. for a very similar reason. Um, even though we only played one Garnet, is the idea would be to go make Omega and then overlay with it into something, and then like when it gets attached or dies or whatever, then you can use Omega's effect to shuffle the Garnet back into uh -huh. your deck. And then if we had a second um, Seraph Knight, we could make two Brilliant Fusions live in a game, even though we only played one Garnet. That's, that's actually kind of cool, too. Yeah, but we did only end up playing one. It, it seemed cool, but it didn't come up very much. Okay. Um, then Volcasaurus. This card's really good. Um, I bought it a second a couple of times. Um, and then Shark Fortress and... Adrius. Adrius was to pop Masker Strike. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, it's really cool to have like engine outs to like the common floodgates against your deck. So you can just like in face summon back a prime on their turn and then start your turn by summoning back a prime and just overlay into Adrius and pop Masker Strike without ever having to draw like any twin twisters or anything. That's really cool. Um, and then I think this is only 14, but I had a Utopia Beyond the, the, the it. Rank um, six, right? Yeah, the rank six, it makes all your opponent's monsters zero when it's summoned. So um, the easiest way to summon that, you can summon it off Teleporter, or you can go um, Domain with Ether into Karaz. And, oh, Karaz is somewhere. Yeah, um, so you reveal it, make it a six. Um, some of this pop whatever and then make the F0 thing mm -hmm. or, or uh, Utopia Beyond and then you can make all their monsters zero and it's just really easy to kill them through a big field with that. That's pretty awesome. That's yep. pretty cool. Very cool. So, so going forward with this particular format now seeing it what we know we think are going to be the best few decks. Do you think right now in your opinion is this the best deck? Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I think it has, especially like a really good Cosmo matchup. Like um, Stormforth is just so, puts you so far ahead in that mm -hmm. in that matchup. And um, in the mirror match, then it's like I'm playing a regular Monarch deck, but I can use my extra deck too because like domain mm -hmm. only works when you don't have a tribute. So like I can just tribute someone and then use my extra deck. Yeah. Um, so I think it has a really big advantage over all the other decks. Does this deck really have a bad matchup? Uh, like, is there? It did. Uh, I mean, like. It, it was hard to beat pendulums when they go first, but it was hard to beat pendulums when they go first with anything last format. Mm -hmm. So like, it definitely got a lot better. Of course. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks for the deck profile. Yeah, we no really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to go check out his book. Yeah. Buy it. Road to the King. Road to the King, that's what's up. Thanks again, Patrick. We'll definitely see you on the next video yep. and your duels and whatnot. Take it easy, all right? Take care.